Hello, snakes. My name is Dante. Merry Christmas. And today, it's Podcast Tuesday, once again. Well, today I'm in Italy. I did the GP in Bologna, and it went well. So, since I'm in Bologna right now in Italy, this is not live, because there's a bad internet connection. But today, instead of talking about planeswalkers, we're talking about invitational cards, or pro cards, pro player cards, because these were cards that were made by or for a pro player. Most of those cards are made by a pro player, but there's this one exception, one card that was made for a pro player by Wizards of the Coast and not by the pro player. And yeah, let's get to our card 12. And it is... We got Avalanche Riders. Avalanche Riders is the worst uh, pro card in this podcast. It's just too weak. Well, it is an uncommon. Usually they were rares. Uh, but this one was an uncommon. So Avalanche Riders was made by this player called Darwin Castle. And yeah, 4 mana, 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Nomad with Echo, f 3 and 1 red. Yes, the CMC is, the casting cost is 3 and 1 red as well. When it has haste and went to the battlefield, destroy turret land. Yeah. And it's, it's not that bad. It's, yes, this is the worst card in, in this podcast, but... But it's not that bad because you because for four mana it's literally you get to pay one more uh for a it's stone rain but you're paying one more for a two two with haste so at least you land two damage on them because that might be different if you if you're paying the echo cost or not because if you're not paying the echo cost it's literally a 4 mana molt molten drain but otherwise it's can be a continuous uh a, a continuous creature attacking you after it's stone rained let's get to our card number 11 And it is Root Water Thief. Root Water Thief is a 2 mana 1 2 uh, Merfolk. This card was made by a player called Mike Long. Since he didn't have a pro card like Darwin Castle there, I just had to put it in the position there. So yeah, Root Water Thief for 1 mana can gain flying. So, yeah, it can get good. And when it hits a player, you may pay to to search their deck for a card and remove it from the game. And they shuffle their deck. Or, yeah, shuffle their library, yeah. And, and what's really good about this card is you just, uh, you just attack them, give it, yeah, give flying attack. So turn two, you have this. Turn three. Give it flying, attack an opponent, uh, so he hits them, pay two, search their deck for their win con, say Mikasen Flatis, or, 
or Nephi disc or something like that, and part of an infinite combo, it's Islet. That's something you can do in Commander. Yeah, it's actually quite good. Let's get to our card number 10 there. Didn't you notice anything that the pro the pro cards, the invi all the invitational cards, or even pro cards as well, had their had their faces photoshopped onto the card or or just put onto the card? Yeah, Shao Mage Infiltrator is our number ten. Say free mana, one free wizard with with fear. When it deals combat damage to the player, you may draw a card. And this card was made by John Finkel. And yeah. It's say it can get really good because it's hard to block and can get you cards. Yeah. Now let's get to our card number nine. Simply nine. Sylvan's Sylvan Safekeeper, which was made by Olorad. It's played in some it's played in some uh legacy deck, commander decks. It's not as bad as you think it is. It's just it can get really good. Say one mana, one one human wizard with sacrifice a land, target creature you control gains shroud. And it's actually really good it can save all your it can save lots of your creatures and can be really powerful with stuff like mending of dominaria or even or even using uh uh crucible or ramunap excavator or just anything that gets lands from your graveyard to the battlefield or just stuff like Geetrog Monster, where you just sacrifice all your land, where you sacrifice lands to draw cards, and like you could go like, uh. But the thing is, to make it combo with Geetrog, you'll need a bunch of creatures because Sylvan Safekeeper, Sylvan Safekeeper's ability can't target a creature. Already targeted by Sylvan Safekeeper's ability this turn. So, like, you go like Sylvan Sa Safekeeper, sack land, give Geetrog Shroud. You sack another, so you draw cards, sack another land. You have to give Sa Sylvan Safekeeper Shroud. Sack another land, like, wait, you can't. You can't pay the cost because there is no target. You do not have a legal target for Sylvan Safekeepers because they're. Oh, Shroud! You can't target them! And there you go. So with Geetrog, it's basically draw cards equal to number of creatures you control, but sacrifice lands. Yeah. It can sometimes be worth it, and it's such a good card. Card 8, Golden 8, here we go! And we got Void Mage Prodigy. Void Mage Prodigy is a 2 blue, 2 1 wizard made by Kai Bude. And it's it can get really powerful in a wizard's deck. Because for 2 blue and sacrifice a wizard, you can counterspell. So you can sacrifice wizards to counterspell, counterspell. Like, Throw wizard 
at the spell and counter it, and it has to morph for one blue. So you can uh, cast this for morph, free mana, two two creature, and then like, then they don't know. But then like when they cast something thinking it's safe when you have no card, you're like morph one blue, two mana, sacrifice, uh, just some random wizard. I don't know, any wizard. Let's say. Wizard, wizard, wizard. Void, uh, shadow mage infiltrator. Say, shadow mage infiltrator. Counter their spell. And they go like, what? What did he just do again? Yeah. That is something that's really cool. If you can pull it off. Yeah. It's, it can get really Really powerful. Card 7, simply 7, here we go. <coughs> and we got Rakdos Augur Mage, made by Terry Saw. And it's a free mana, free to human wizard with first strike, tap. Reveal, uh, Reveal your hand and discard a card of target opponent's choice. Then that player reveals his or her hand and discard a chart, discard a, discards a card of your choice. Play this ability only at uh, activate this ability uh, only at sorcery speed. <laughs> it's really, it can get really good because like tap. So free mana, free two first striker, not bad. Tap, l fought seize your opponent, and let your opponent fought seize you, and getting and being able to get rid of lands, it can get really powerful, and and it's mainly good for commander, and yeah. But the thing is that that does not work like, uh. The out channels, stuff like that. Like anything that says like when you like destroy a creature of your choice and then destroy a creature of an opponent's choice. So that cannot that's not good for politicking. It's just pure it's just a, a pure power. It's not uh it's not meant for politics, it's just meant for for just it's just a powerful card. Let's get to card six, and it is we got the sad robot himself, Solemn Simulacrum, made by Jens Foren, and four mana two two artifact creature golem. Yeah, you know him from Commander Solemn Simulacrum and. Also known as Sad Robot. And yeah, you can see you can see in the art yourself. It looks like a sad robot. It's pro it's basically probably because the the guy who created that card, that Jens Foreign, must have been sad, like as of was like looking sad for a moment and then the artist, the illust the illustrator just Inserted a sad face there, and like, why? I don't know. It it would have been better if if the pro player would say like, please, make me look happy in the art, and then like, or. But that, it's that did not happen, and like it's just really funny. Yeah, like in case if you didn't know what this does. T enters battlefield ramp, dice draw card. It's really good. Like, it's not like it's not like go loss, which go loss can search for any land. It this just searches for basics. It's like rampant growth. For rampant growth, as a two two creature that wanted dice draw card. On top of that, it's time for card number five.
we got Meddling Mage, which was made by Chris Picula. And say two mana, two, two, wizard with Winter's Battlefield. Name an on-land card. Name card can't be cast. And it's so good. Like, literally, just name the opponent's best card in there and they just can't cast it. Or, like, go, like, this is played a lot in modern. And, like, you go, like, meddling mage. Naming lightning bolt. And, like, burn players who go, like, what? No lightning bolts? And I, but then they realize, hmm, we have a, we do have Searing Blaze, which can kill Meddling Mage and deal free damage to controller of the spell. And then that's when I can use uh, Lightning Bolt again. And then you're like, okay, Meddling Mage, naming Searing Blaze. And they're like, what? How can we deal with this? Impossible. It's just really annoying and powerful in the same at the same time and it's just pure power played in humans decks in modern and just humans decks and yeah it's good it's a really good card card number four here we go We got Ranger of Eos, made by Antoine Ware. Four mana, free to human soldier with Winter Battlefield. Search your deck, uh, search your library for two creatures with CMC one or less. Reveal them, put in your hand. If you do, shuffle your library, and it's really good because you go like, okay, you can search stuff like. Land War Elves, Death Shadow, uh, what else one man? Elvish Mystic, I don't know. Uh, Noble Hierarch, Birds of Paradise, Gilded Goose, just all the good stuff. Like, and any good one man stuff, you can search it off. It's like, it's what you get when you split a, when you split an, Imperial Recruiter slash Recruit of the Guard. Well, Recruit of the Guard came later, but basically they split Imperial Recruiter because Imperial Recruiter searches for CMC 2 or less. This searches for 2 with CMC 1 or less. And yeah, you know what I mean. And there's a similar card, probably not made by Antoine Rue. Uh, but making a reference to Antoine's Ranger of Eos, made called Ranger Captain of Eos. Free mana, free free human soldier as well, yeah. What enter Falfield? You may search your library for, for one creature with CMC 1 or less. Reveal it in your hand and shuffle your library. Go like, how is this, like, how is this better than Ranger of Eos? Because of this. Sacrifice it, your opponents can't cast non-creature spells this turn. So it silences the opponent to non-creatures. Golden free. We got Dark Confident. Which, you know, or... Everyone knows this as Bob. Because this was made by Bob Marr. And Dark Confident is 2 mana, 2 1 human wizard with at the of your upkeep, reveal top card of your library and put in your hand. You lose life equal to its DMC. And it it's really, really powerful. In modern where everything's just uh, cheap. Like, it's played in Jun decks, and, like, you always hit low stuff, like, one mana, two mana. 
the highest you can hit is four mana Bloodbraid Elf, and that's the only four mana stuff in the deck. Sometimes you can even hit land and get get no no life loss. It's so good. It can it can be good. Yeah, it's so so good. Yeah. But the thing is that it's uncontrollable. You have to do it every turn. So you can kill yourself with a dark confident. That's its only flaw. Everything else perfect. Just make sure you have a bolt in hand. Whenever you're at a breaking point and you have Dark Confident, just bolt your own Dark Confident so you won't die to its effect. Or push it. Uh, if you're playing it in a Death Shadow deck, just path it and you get a land. Like, some Death Shadow de decks run Dark Confident. But we have number two coming right up. The exception. Exceptional number two. Because watch this. This card is an exception. It's exceptional. It's the only card that's different to the others in this podcast. Because you see, this card was not made by, by a pro. This was made by Wizards of the Coast themselves for a pro player. The 2018 world champion, Javier Dominguez. And this card is Furfin Champion! One red, one one, human knight, first strike haste. When it attacks, another attacking knight, you control gets plus one plus zero into an turn. And uh, and this is just irrelevant text. Equip abilities, you activate that target, fervent champion costs three less to activate. Not sure if you're ever going to do this, like play an equipment deck. You could you could synergize this with uh, Stoneforge Mystic. I'm not I'm not sure if you can, but but it could work. I don't know. Well, Fervent Champion was not made by Javier Dominguez. This was made for Javier Dominguez. And who was the world champion winner of 2018. And that was the final. That was the last world championships. Because 2019 did not have world championships. Instead, because usually... You have Planeswalker points, which can be redeemed for a, like, if you're like, like, for example, in Spain, if you have like 500 uh, Planeswalker points, you can go to regionals in Spain, which then, which if you win, you can go to world championships and, and yeah, the thing is that 2018 was the last one. Because 2019 replaced that function of the Planeswalker points with GP buys. Like, if you have like 1,300 uh, Planeswalker points, you can redeem them for one buy. 2,500 redeem them for two buys. And, yeah. So, yeah. But the thing is that there are rumors that they'll come back in 2020. I'm not sure if that's happening, but... Let's hope it does. But it's... Let's talk about... So yeah, this card is just really good. It's played in standard, in the mono red decks, uh, Mardu Knight decks. And there might be a synergy with equipment. I don't think if you... I don't think you can, but it can get really good with equipment. And yeah, it's such a powerful card. But this is not the best, because the real best one is... Snapcaster Mage, made by Tiago Chan. And yeah, Snapcaster Mage, it's such a good card. 
played in ev- in modern legacy like every format basically well not every format all of its legal formats like modern legacy i think it's played in vintage as well but commander of course not why are you playing this in commander there's no point either way this is just a really good card it's just two mana two one human wizard with flash when to spell if you tie into instant or sorcery in your graveyard gains flashback on turn of turn the flashback cost is equal to its cmc and yeah it's it can get really really good like snapcaster mage can be really good because you can you can just uh, flash in unexpectedly just cast a counter spell from from graveyard with snapcaster also can block an attacker by surprise or just snapcaster bolt just recast anything or even i think i think it's possible but go like uh living end or something like that just cast one of those zero mana spells to like if you somehow discard it just discard it snapcaster mate snapcaster mage cast living end cmc is zero oh, yeah cast it for zero mana living end but i'm not sure if that's possible i'm not sure if it's work if it works that way or not but i think it does because the CMC of a card with no mana cost is zero. But, you see, it's really good. Like, don't, you know those, those cards made by pros? The thing is that they won uh, invitational events, uh, like, were, were the winner gets their own card like like for example those pros just design their own cards like when they win they can design their own card get uh be the first one to get it and then print it in a future set so in 2007 tiago chan was the last person to win one of those invitational events and he designed snapcaster mage and then, in, wait, what year? Wait, does that say, I think it's 2011. Yeah, 2011, they made Snapcaster Mage. This was a thing since two, since 1999. And, yeah. And it looked cool. The thing is, the, the new one, Fervent Champion, was made for Javier Dominguez by wizards themselves and it just it's just really cool i'm wondering when will they make a card for luis salvato and yeah and yeah so you reached the end of this podcast congratulations so yeah why don't you just like and subscribe if you haven't already follow my twitch channel link in description below and share for friends stay tuned to our next video streams and podcasts the pod usually podcasts we live every tuesday but since i'm in italy right now uh this had to be recorded and just manually published so but in general they'll always be uh, uh, live on every tuesday at 4 p.m. GMT, and yeah, remember to stay tuned to him. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and bye.